everyone! The last time we left off, the four siblings were squabbling over the inheritance and the truth was finally revealed by Kraus that all of them are in some deep trouble regarding their finances. Personally, I was a little taken aback, but let's see how today's story will unfold. Hmm. What did he know? Hi. Oh my, there's a spy. クラウス様は黄金の発見を問わずにその分け前として、エヴァ様、ルドルフ様、ローザ様に計75億円を支払うこと。ただしその1割を3月までに支払うこと。クラウスの間抜け目弟たちに足を触られるとはな実に愉快ではないかしかし爪が甘いようだなはいクラウス様はそれをエヴァ様以下お三人が緊急に大金を用立てする必要があるためとカンパされました ふんその程度のことはカンパできるのかちゅうと半端に無能な男め今はどうしているはい Inzo set down his glasses and snorted. キセキの成就が先か。愚か者どもが黄金を暴くのが先か。実に身物ではないか。愚か者どもが我が謎を解き明かしたなら、その時は私の全ての敗北だ。我が屍を骨の一かけらまでしゃぶり尽くすがいい
申し訳ございませんよいつまりはこういうことだベアトリーチェの碑文の謎を解いた者には私が築き上げてきた全てを与えよう富名誉黄金そして後ろ宮家の家督私が築き上げてきた全てだその謎に挑む資格があるのは何も私の息子たちだけとは限らぬたとえお前であってもその謎を解けたなら全てを得る資格があるのだはいですが僕にはあのような難しい謎は分かりかねます無論だ難解に作っただがお前も挑めそれが我が魔法の奇跡を呼ぶ糧となる誰もが挑み誰にも至れなかったらその時はその時だが奇跡が集い魔法の力が生まれたならその時こそペアトリーチェが蘇るのだだからお前も挑め誰もが挑めそして我が魔法に力を捧げるのだわかるなはい、努力します。For a long while, Kinzo repeatedly muttered to himself, agitated and grabbing onto his head. Kenan stayed where he was, alert and unmoving, until he was given a next order from his master. Kinzo finally realized this. もうえよい、下がれ。酒棚に菓子の袋がある。ダチンに持っていくがよい結構です僕は家具ですからふん<笑>家具は菓子など食わぬか道理だなならばもう下がれはい失礼いたします Didn't know Cannon was close to Kinza like this Kenan bowed and left the study. As the door was closed, a heavy locking noise resounded. But that was not the sound of Kenan locking the door. It was the door locking automatically. No one could enter without Kinzo's permission, and once they left, They could not enter again. It was a mechanism that Kinzo, unable to trust his blood relatives, had created to lock himself up in his own study and isolate himself from the world outside. The only ones he could trust now were not the sons who shared his blood, but those servants who called themselves furniture. Nanjo Sensei, I can't get a sign of the stuff. Oh, Genji, son. We are not here. I'm sure I'm not going to be here. With a bitter laugh, Nanjo turned to face the door to the parlor. It seemed that because of that motion, Genji understood what Nanjo wanted to say. For the most part, Genji also understood the family's situation. It must have made him want to frown. Knowing that right now in the parlor, the master he served was being discussed so disrespectfully. But it would have been very difficult to gather that from his indifferent expression. They keep talking about the epitaph, but I have yet to read the epitaph myself. Nanjo looked at the portrait of Beatrice. No, he actually directed his gaze beneath the portrait at a plate with the epitaph. Kinzo-san's chess was a 
時には理解できない一手さえ私ごとき凡庸では何を目論まれているのか皆目見当もつきませんな私はこれを親方様の何かの遺言状ではないかと考えています be honest, I'm a little surprised that Genji so openly shares his thoughts with Nanjo, considering Genji's servant. So, I'm a little surprised that Genji is a servant. So, I'm a little surprised that Genji is a servant. So, I'm a little surprised that Genji is a servant. So, I'm a little surprised that Genji is a s e r v a n 息子さんたちのことを口悪く罵ってはいますがなんとか兄弟が仲を取り戻してほしいと願われているのかもしれません That's a very optimistic view Nanjo has <laughs> Considering Kinzo literally spelled out his intentions just now If, as Nanjo said This epitaph had been written to repair the relationship between the siblings How heartwarming that would be. However, Nanjo and Genji both knew that this was one thing that could never be the case. Here were the two who held the longest relationship with Kinzo, more trusted than his blood relatives. And even though they could not guess at Kinzo's true motive, Nan Jo Sensei wa Ikaga deska. Ya ya, Kono Oibore niwa, Shosho Nankai ga Sigimas na. Jitsa Izen, Kono Hibun o Techo ni Shirushimashtena. Yona yona, Nerumai ni idon de mitano desna. Jitsu ni Muzukashi. Omukai ga Kuruma de no Ida, Yukuri Tanoshimu koto ga dekso desa. Genji san koso. いかがですか、ね、私めは親方様にお仕えする家具にすぎません。I see. So the furniture thing is not limited to just c a n o n s h i n all of them. Well, except I haven't heard Kumasawa and Goda say it. 黄金も財産も。やれやれ。本当に謙虚な方です。だからこそ、金蔵さんもあなたには心を許されるのでしょう。ならば。As Nanjo lightly laughed in response, he once again looked at the epitaph. That which is written on the epitaph. Of the portrait of my beloved witch Beatrice is as follows Behold the sweet fish river running through my beloved home of old. You who seek the golden land follow its path downstream in search of a key. As you travel down it, you will see a village. In that village, look for the shore the two speak of. There, the key to the golden land sleeps. You who laid hand upon a key must journey as follows to the Golden Land. On the first twilight, sacrifice the six chosen by the key. Sacrifice? On the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. On the third twilight, those who remain shall praise my noble name. On the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. On the fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. On the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. On the ninth twilight, the witch revives and none shall be left alive. That's so ominous! On the tenth twilight, the journey ends. And you shall reach the home of the gold. The witch shall praise the wise and bestow four treasures. One shall be all of the golden land's gold, 
One resurrects all the dead people's souls. One even revives all the love they possessed. And one for the witch to eternally rest. Rest in peace, my beloved witch, Beatrice. Oh man, this makes me wonder if Kinzo has followed this before and killed people. It's still the same day Saturday. Okay, but they're at the beach now. Dai Jun no ban ni tabi wa owari. Ogon kyo ni itaru daro. Shikashi Maria wa mame da na. Chanto memo shite ru to wa erai ze. Oi! Maria wa wasure っぽいからちゃんと書く。ママに言われたからちゃんと書く。There was a notebook inside the handbag Maria was always carrying around, and Beatrice's epitaph was copied into it. Thanks to that, we were all able to challenge the puzzle of the epitaph while here on this beach. But Jessica and the others, this was a puzzle that they had already tried to solve several times, and had already gotten bored with. But it was the first for me, and I was so excited. That I couldn't stop. It really tickled my male sense of romance. まず一行目、懐かしき故郷を貫くアユの皮か。じい様の故郷ってどこだっけ？戦前の後ろ宮家は小田原のあたりに屋敷を構えてたって聞いたぜ。で、となりゃ小田原に流れてるアユの泳ぐ川に関心が行くわけだろ？まずはその川が起点になるからな。で、黄金橋を目指す者はそいつを下って鍵を探せとあるわけだ。小田原にある川ってなんだ？アユが泳ぐ川だぜ。小田原でアユって言ったら早川だろうね。渓流釣りで有名だよ。うーい、マリア魚嫌い。<笑>マリアももう少し大きくなったらわかるぜ。アユの塩焼きをベロベロベロってな。うまいぜ。さっき飯食ったばっかりだったのに、もう腹が減ってきちまうぜ。あのビスケットでもお持ちしましょうか。あ、あ、悪い悪い。そんなつもりで言ったんじゃないぜ。気にすんな。Ben and Chan, who didn't have any afternoon chores for a while, was faithfully keeping us company. I would have thought that as a servant. Accompanying us would force her to take care of us and tire her out, but it seemed that it wasn't so in her case. To the contrary, it seemed she was having fun joining in on the conversation with people of a similar age. When I asked, she told me she was a live-in worker. So normally, the only person close in her age was Jessica. I get it. That must be pretty wearisome. Sate. 小田原でアイの川って言えば早川だってことは分かった。となりゃ下るしかねえよな。早川を下ると何があるんだろうな。えっと下流に出て海に出ると思います。そうさ、河口部に出る。そして非分の三行目には川を下ればやがて里割りとあるな。ちなみにそういう河口部は大抵。大昔から輸送の要衝になってて、大きな都市があるもんさ。ここが。次。うんうん。なかなかいい筋だね。バトラ君の想像通り、そこは大昔にとても栄えたことだよ。小田原城があるところだね。ああ。あ、修学旅行で小田原城に行った気がします。素敵なお城でしたよ。ああ、私も小田原城だったぜ。洋館に住んでてなんだが、やっぱり日本人は和風の方が落ち着くよな。おお、マリアお城退屈。遊園地がいい。ほう。そうかそうか。よしよし。黄金を見つけたら、このバトラ様が気前よく遊園地を一日借り切って遊ばせてやるぜ。
。ええー、ええー、しかし、小田原城とはな。小田原城の隠し黄金。おほこりゃなんだかいかにもって感じだよな。<笑>まあ、2年前の私たちもそこまでは行き着いたぜ。小田原で、アユの泳ぐ川を下った里。そこが多分、小田原城あたりだろうってところまでは私たちも行き着いたさ、so、I wonder where they got stuck. 問題は次の行だろう、okay. さてバトラーの沈水理はどこまで行けるか見ものだぜジェシカ grinned broadly It was like she was saying that if the puzzle could be solved so easily she would have found it long ago Damn it I'll definitely find it and keep it all for myself. 4行目。その里にて、二人が口にし、岸を探れ。Yeah, who are the two? うん、二人ってのが何のことかわからねえが、とにかく岸だな。うん、で、岸ってなんだよ。うーん、うーん。岸って名前がつく地名でもあるのかな。えっと、蘇我騎士という地名が小田原にあるんだそうですよ。えおお、詳しいな。ってことはなんだよ。シャノンちゃんも黄金を狙って謎解きに挑戦してるんだな。となりゃ、俺たちはライバルだぜ。べ、別に黄金なんて興味は。ただその、以前にジョージ様から教えてもらっただけで。2年前の私たちも同じ推理に行き着いたってわけさわざわざ地図を広げて調べたんだぜ小田原城の北に5キロくらいだったかなそこには確かに蘇我騎士という地名があるよでもそこからがわからないんだ次の5行目にはその土地のどこに鍵があるかは記してないマリアちゃん読んでくれるかいそこに黄金鏡への鍵が眠るうん読めた蘇我騎士ったって広いだろうしかつてそこに後宮家の家があったわけでもないその広大な土地のどこかに鍵が隠されてて納品取ってんじゃこいつはお手上げってわけだぜ I get it 確かにな。鍵が手に入らないことにはその先の行に進めないぜジョージ兄貴蘇我騎士ってのはどんなとこなんださあね行ったことはないからわからないけど地図によると山の中みたいだよ確か浅間山の山麓みたいだったねうーんなんだかパッとしねえな宝のありかを隠した謎ってのは、もっとぴったりとハマるもんじゃねえのかよ。どうも、蘇我騎士ってのがそもそも間違いって気がするぜ。Let's trust your gut instincts, Butler. 私は蘇我騎士を疑ってるぜ。私たちが知らないだけで、例えば、じい様の子供時代を過ごした家とかがあるかもしれないだろ一行目に、懐かしき故郷を追って、手行があるくらいだもんなシャノンはじい様によく酒とか継がされてたろ昔話とか聞かされたことないのか親方様は昔の話はほとんどされませんただ後宮家が滅びかけた関東大震災について非常に人事のように話されることがありましたので関東地方よりずっと遠方にお住まいだったかもしれません後宮本家は小田原に住んでたかもしれないけど、文家はその限りじゃなかったろうね。おじい様はよく自分のことを、文家も文家、後継ぎに最も縁遠かった、と言われるくらいだからね。ってことはつまり、懐かしき故郷ってのが、すでに小田原じゃない可能性もあるってことだな。Right, that's what I'm thinking too. じい様の故郷なんて聞いたこともないぜ。聞いても素直に教えちゃくれねえだろうしよ懐かしき故郷というのが後宮家のルーツを指さないのであれば小田原説は初めから間違ってることになっちゃうね
もちろん蘇我騎士の疑いが晴れたわけじゃないけれども例えば幼少の頃を小田原で過ごしその後遠方へ引っ越した可能性もあるだろうしおおさっきから何の話かわかんないおお Maria had been completely left out of the conversation, and now she sat puffing out her cheeks in boredom. Ah, つまりだな黄金すごろくの最初のスタート地点が決まらないことには何も始まらないってことだぜ That's true. It's a lot more complicated than it originally seemed. んいやま最初の五行で見つかるのは鍵だろ鍵なんてなくても扉はぶち壊して入ることだってできるはずだぜとりあえず最初の五行をすっ飛ばしてその先の推理に入ってもいいんじゃねえか That's a unique way of going about it. ああその発想はなかったぜまあいいやどうせ暇つぶしなんだ続きを聞かせろよバトラの推理でもその先からは急に物騒になるんですよねシャネンチャン frowned slightly After looking back at Maria's notebook to recall what was written there. Alright, I agree. To be honest, if you're not prepared to do the disturbing part, then just don't go searching for the treasure. The gold, I mean. だ。恋仲を破断させるのか。文字通り、引き裂くという意味なのか。わかりかねるけど、どっちにせよ、気持ちの悪い話だぜ。その第二の番の解釈を別にしても、第一の番に6人、第四の番から第八の番までで5人、少なく見積もっても、11人が生贄にえにされなきゃならない。I'm trying to think how many people are here. We have Kinzo, okay, and then the oldest, which is a three, and then the second oldest, which is another three, so that's seven, and then three people more with Battler's family, and then two with Rosa. Okay, there's more than there's more than eleven. Narodo, Majo Fukatsno Tameno i k e n i そういう解釈にもなるなその結果第9の番に魔女が蘇って最後は極めつけだな第9の番に魔女は蘇り誰も生き残れはしない結局はみんな死んでしまいますそれでようやく次の第10の番にゴールってことになってんなみんな死んじまうのに黄金橋へ至るだろうって言われても困ったもんだぜ。What if the golden land is in that other world? 鍵を手に旅に出た当人も生き残れないに含めるのかどうかは解釈の分かれるところだね。しかしよ、最後のところには面白いことが書いてあるぜ。ゴールした後、魔女からもらえる4つの宝の行だよ。1つは全ての黄金。問題は次だ。すべての死者の魂を蘇らせるとあるぜ。みんな死んじまったっていうのとかけてるような気がしねえか。それを言われれば、次の失ったアイスらも蘇らせるという部分は、第二の番の寄り添いし二人を引き裂けにかけているようにも見えますね。そうだね。そして、四つ目も第九の番にかけてある。第9の番に蘇った魔女を4つ目の宝が再び眠りにつかせている好意的に解釈すりゃ死んだり別れさせたりと忙しいが最後には全部チャラになるわけだな<笑> People dying is still not favorable but okay 目覚めた魔女も再び眠るし手元にはたっぷりの黄金だけが残るって寸法だぜ死んだり蘇らせたり別れさせたりくっつかせたりと魔女様はお忙しいこったねついでに起きたり眠ったりな<笑>やれやれ
。せっかくの隠し黄金の話も、魔女の話が絡んじまうと、急にうさんくさくなっちまうぜ。違いないな<笑> I laughed along with Jessica. After all, a witch was just ridiculous. Of course, once we started laughing like that, Maria, who believed in witches, got angry. <laughs> Jessica apologized, sticking out her tongue, but Maria didn't accept it. She grabbed her notebook back out of my hands, opening to the other pages, tried to prove that witches existed. Those pages had colored illustrations of witches drawn on them, and conveyed a fantastical image Maria had of witches well. They were not depicted as the normal sinister, crooked nose hag flying around on brooms, but as dreamlike people with mysterious powers who could do anything and wore beautiful dresses. Just what you would expect from an imaginative young girl. Dancing through the sky, crossing a rainbow, dancing all around the night with magical teacups and teapots that would never get empty no matter how much you poured out of them. With a flourish of their wands, the stars in the sky would become candy and pour down, and flowers that produced sweets would bud by the roadside. To Maria, witches were the sole thing that could give form to the magical dreams that so captivated her. The last thing enriching her reality, which revealed more and more of its bland nature to her with every inch she grew. That was why Maria believed in witches. She didn't want that dream to be insulted, and for that very reason, nor did she want the epitaph, which affirmed the existence of witches, to be insulted. Because the witch Beatrice is Maria's dream. マリアちゃんにとってはこれは黄金の隠し場所を示すものじゃなくて魔女を蘇らせるための魔法なんだって。So it was the single bridge between Maria and the witch. Maria was very angry and clung onto George Aniki. Jessica and I scratched our heads and apologized. It might not be possible to smooth things over again like the time she caught Matt in front of the portrait. Maria didn't want to be easily consoled. As Jessica and I hung our heads, wondering what we could do, Shannon Chan timidly opened her mouth in our place. Ano, Maria sama, gozonji desu ka? Watashi tachi shiyongin no aida dewa, Beatrice sama no kaidan ga katari tsugarete iru ndesu yo. Oh? Ah, ah, so da ta ke? Shannon, shikasete yaru yo. 私は知らないんだけど、使用人の間じゃかなり有名な話らしいぜ。何の話だ？階段？うん。僕たちが生まれる前からある話らしいね。母さんにも話を聞かされたことがあるよ。はい。この島にお屋敷が建てられてからずっと語り継がれている話です。当時の使用人たちはお屋敷には昼と夜で。違う主がいると囁き合っていたそうです。The tale that Shannon told was just like a typical campfire ghost story. If there was a forest with a witch living inside it, then inevitably the witch was going to pay the mansion a visit. At some point, this ghost story naturally sprouted up between the servants. ちゃんと閉めたはずの窓や扉や鍵がもう一度見回りに来たら開いていたとか、消したはずの明かりがついていたり、つけたはずの明かりが消えていたり、置いたはずのものがなくなっていたり、置いた覚えのないものが置かれていたり。Maybe it was a ghost and not a witch。そういうことがあるたびに古い使用人たちは。
魔女が姿を消してお屋敷を訪れいたずらをしていったのだろうとささやきあったそうですいるベアトリーチェはいるなあいるよな私も昔よく登校の時に限ってカバンが見つからなかったりしたもんだぜマリアパフダーハーチェストウィンウウウエスドウディスウォスタファイナルプルーフダーダーウィッチエグゼステッドイフアイセッドアウトラウドマリアウッドプロバブリビハーディゲンソウアイディデントバットアイミン You hear that kind of story everywhere. Depending on the place, it might be blamed on fairies or something. It's just that on this island, they call it the witch. Of course, you'd expect that walking around a vast, elegant mansion at night would be a little unsettling. It's an island devoid of people. Since the mansion is so drafty, walking around on the night of a thunderstorm would certainly be eerie. 他にも、お見火や輝く蝶々が舞っているのを見たという使用人も、カノン君もそれらしいものを、以前、夜の見回りの時に見たことがあると言ってました。あと、最近では、お屋敷の中で、深夜に、不思議な足音をよく聞くと、使用人の間で話題です。私たちは、肖像画の中のベアトリーチェ様が、姿を消してお屋敷の中を散歩しているんだろうとささやき合ってるんですよ。ずいぶん前ですが、私もそうかもしれない足音を夜の見回りの時に聞いたことがあります。What if it was just Kinzo walking around at night to get a glass of water or something? ヒュー。そりゃ怖えな。あ。でも、怯えることはないんですよ。ベアトリーチ様は、親方様とは異なる、もう一人のお屋敷の主です。だから、変に怯えたりしないで、敬意を持っていれば、決して悪いことはしないのだそうです。She is strangely strong about this. Courageous. ただし、敬意を持たないと、恐ろしいんだったね。はい。私が勤めを始める直前に、階段を転がり落ちて、腰に大怪我をしてやめた方は、ベアトリーチェ様のことを悪く言っていたそうです。だから使用人たちは、ベアトリーチェ様のお怒りに触れたのだろうと噂し合ったそうです。うーん。バトラとチェシコ、きっとお怒りに触れる。うん。He doesn't know what she's speaking about, I think. Wow, I'm sorry. 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 わかんない。魔女は気まぐれだから、許してくれるときは許してくれるし、許さないときは許さない。うん。それは困ったね。マリアちゃん、バトラ君とジェシカちゃんが、ベアトリーチェ様のお怒りに触れないようにする、いいおまじないとかないかな。何か、魔除けとかさ。By relying on Maria, who is proud of knowing the most about witches, George was trying to revive his self esteem. I was once again forced to admire his ability to comfort children. After crossing our arms and pondering seriously as to whether there was some charm capable of protecting Jessica and myself from the witch's wrath, Maria began flipping through the pages of her handbook. I had thought it was just a simple scribbled diary. But it turned out that there were also many pages that looked like they had come from a book on black magic. She's gonna be just like Kinzo. She was intently comparing several such pages, onto which had been copied from what looked like magic circles. It looked like that black magic hobby wasn't limited to grandfather alone. Perhaps she had finished her research. 
She vigorously closed the notebook with a snap, threw it into her handbag, and began fishing through the bag's contents. It seemed that various jumbled up things were in there. For a while, she continued to take out various pieces of junk, although they were probably important magical items to her, and repeatedly threw them back in, saying they were wrong. She looked a little humorous, almost like a Santa Claus deliberating over which present to give. Finally, it seemed that she had excavated what she was looking for. With a face unimaginably brighter than the difficult expression she had worn until now, she stuck them out to Jessica and me. <laughs> As I reached out to grab it, I noticed that it was a very cheap looking charm. It looked like a bracelet made from a plastic rosary with a scorpion motif metal attached. I mean, you often find cheap accessories that correspond to the constellations. It felt like a gift that you might win in the crane game at an arcade. It really looked like something like that. There were two. Probably one for me and one for Jessica. However, considering the odd fact that there were two of them, they looked like cheap manufactured goods, and it was quite hard to think of them as magical items. I had inflamed Maria again because I said too much. Maria took out her notebook again and turned and pointed to page after page, going on and on about how the scorpion had holy power and had been drawn on magic repelling magic circles since ancient times. To be honest, it's my first time hearing anything like this, so new information. Eh, so I really wanted to make fun of this worthless looking charm. Don't do that. <laughs> but as I watched Maria explain the charm with all of her heart and realized that she had prepared them out of consideration for us, it felt as though, even if it were just a prize from a game center, it would still be beneficial. Mature quality isn't what's important about charms, it's strength of the feelings behind them. I'd like to think I have enough respect for myself not to make fun of those. ありがとうな。ベアトリーチェ様には謝ったけどよ。万が一タタリがある時でもマリアのこのお守りのおかげで安心だぜ。ま、ジェシカ。ああ、そうだぜ。ありがとうな、マリア。Seems like their parents all need that. <laughs><笑>それはすごい効能ですね。マリア様が自信を持って進めるお守りならきっと楽しいものと思います。as Shannon Chan tapped her hands together lightly, Maria stuck out her chest. She was completely cheered up again. If it would keep her in this good of a mood, it would probably be worth it to let Maria lead the discussion for a while longer. When you think about it, she hadn't shared in our excitement when we talked about the gold's hidden location, so I think she got a little bored. While eating the cookies Kumasawa-san had baked, Jessica and I asked Maria this and that about black magic. Maria happily chatted away in response to our questions. For each one, George Aniki and Shannon Chan would act surprised and agree with everything she said. They are actually really good of children. Didn't know Shannon had that in her. 
The color of the clouds in the sky grew progressively heavier, but the cousins really enjoyed communicating freely after one year of separation. A little random, but in the last few episodes of Parts, during the scene in the parlor, you could hear the wind blowing through, but outside here in the beach, it's so calm and peaceful. I stand corrected. <laughs> I spoke too soon. As George Aniki rubbed his forehead, he looked up at the sky. Considering the color of the sky and the dampness of the air, raindrops could have easily have started falling down at any moment. It also seemed like the wind had gotten a little stronger. Shannon-chan looked down at her watch. It may already be well into the evening. Shannon-chan declined our help, saying that this was a servant's job. But picking up a dropped fork before the waitress has to is like my purpose in life. <laughs> we folded up the blanket, gathered up the trash, and helped clean everything up. I'm glad that at least they're not spoiled and helping out with chores and stuff. Well, it's not really a chore, but helping out with the cleaning. I can already imagine their parents won't lift a single finger. <laughs> Is the wind blowing it away? <laughs> <laughs> to Maria, chasing after some trash that the strong winds have sent flying was just like an extension of our playtime. By the time we finished cleaning up, the wind had started blowing very strongly. It looked like a good chance to head back. <laughs> George Anigi perceived from a hurried appearance that very little of a free time was left. After making a respectful bow, Shin and Chan hurried off in the direction of the Rose Garden. Even Maria, who was still not tired of playing, agreed when she thought about watching TV. We headed up the gentle stairs and returned to the rose garden. The wind had become very strong, and roses shook throughout the garden like ripples on water. This might be our last chance to see these beautiful roses. Tonight's typhoon is sure to ruin them. What about that single rose that they put the egg to? So dono Baratachimo Lucky Datato Mose Taifu no Mani Batoratachio Kange Dictan da Karayo Hanawa Itska Kanarazu Chiru Demo Dakara Koso Saki Hokoru Yima or Mederu Kotoga de Kirun Janaikana So Dana Maria Moyoku Meni Akitoke Yima Kono Shunkanga
Right then, Maria suddenly clapped her hands. It looked like she had remembered something. It seemed that Maria remembered where the rose was. She ran at full speed. The rest of us followed her. Is it gone? We searched everywhere around that area, but, after all, it was only a single flower among us, all these roses. Even though we knew it was somewhere close by, it wasn't proving easy to find. The winds that made up the front lines of the typhoon were making the roses throughout the garden undulate. It was almost like it was teasing us by making the location of Maria's rose impossible to find. Just like searching for the key. <laughs> As we made to split up and search, Maria tugged on my jacket with an unhappy face. It felt like her intention was to stop us from going to another place. She's hitting Badler. Maria stomped her feet in irritation. She was pointing at the spot, saying it was definitely there, yet it actually wasn't. And yet, if we went to go search elsewhere, she got mad. We were at a loss for what to do. For a while, we would have to stay with Maria and pretend to search through this rose thicket. I wonder why she's so adamant. I mean, I think it would be fine to go and search the other areas though. Maybe she's saying that it should be here, but isn't. Maria became increasingly ill-tempered. Just as we were starting to despair for a way out of the situation, Maria shouted out loudly. In the direction she was waving, Auntie Rosa's figure was visible. Maybe she wanted to look at the garden one more time before the typhoon came. Or maybe she had some business at the guest house. Auntie Rosa was coming from the mansion. She quickly noticed her daughter's voice and came over. That's kind of rude. マリアのバラって。この辺に元気のないバラを一つ見つけて、それに目印をつけたんです。雨玉かなんかの包み紙できっと。しかしマリア、確か俺の記憶が正しければすぐ手前の目立つところに生えてたはずだぜ。足が生
you know, suddenly that scene from Totoro popped into my mind. <laughs> What if it led to some unknown place far, far away and that's where the rose is? And so Auntie Rosa, who also realized very quickly that it wasn't here... ちゃんと信じて探したりでしょ。でもないじゃない。でもここなの。ここにあるのにないの。うん。うん。じゃあ誰かが抜いちゃったんでしょ。That's kind of harsh. I think Maria would get even more upset. とにかくそのうう言うのやめなさい。and Rosa is really angry. Uncharacteristically so. Who knows what's happening between them? Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. What the heck? Don't hit your kid. Auntie Rosa slapped Maria's left cheek with her palm. For that instant, Maria was shocked into silence. Of course, it was only for an instant. When Maria realized that her wish was being rejected before it could be fulfilled, she started yelling with an increasingly louder voice. Of course she would cry even more. Why do you hit her? Oh my god. You don't say that to your kid. What's wrong with you? Oh my god, again? My impression of Rosa just went all the way down. Once again, her palm slapped Maria's cheek. This time, she didn't go silent. She choked as she started crying and began to bawl in an increasingly louder voice. Auntie Rosa was clearly irritated and lifted her hand once more to try and shut her daughter up. There are so many things to say about child raising practices and this is so not one of them <laughs> I attempted to intervene with a forced smile and my hands clasped together but the deadly serious look I was thrown by Auntie Rosa taught me quickly that I shouldn't butt in What's she gonna do? I don't think it's just gonna be a little talk. I mean, I get that Maria is being unreasonable by insisting that the rose is where she says it is when it clear clearly isn't, but Rosa's attitude towards her is very bad and it also gives us insight into how she must be treating Maria all this while I can only imagine how hard Maria must have it living with Rosa if Rosa is harboring all these thoughts about 
you know, kids making fun of Maria and hating that weird habit. I understand that Rosa must get made fun of or bullied, I don't know, <laughs> because of Maria's bad habits or whatever. But seriously, that's still no way to treat your child. That's no way to treat anyone. Oh, oh my god. Auntie Rosa once again raised her hand and overrun by emotions, slapped Maria's cheek. It was so strong, it knocked Maria over. Now that's... I mean, she already crossed the line, but this is really way over the line. Hey, Rosa was a... I stepped between them to protect Maria, who was still on the ground, crying, Ooh, ooh. I know that problems between parent and child are none of my business as an outsider, but I wasn't brought up to just silently observe something like this. Good on you, Butler. <sighs> Come on, I'm sure it's just a kid thing. It seemed that my reckless words had brought Auntie Rosa's wrath down upon me. She grabbed my collar with a terrifying expression. マリアがいくつか知ってる?9歳よ?小学4年生なのよ?幼稚園児じゃないのよ。それなのにまだクラスでうう言ってるのよ。わかる?この子クラスで何て言って I still don't know whether Rosa's anger comes from a place of concern for Maria or concern for her own self-image. Did she slap her again? Oh my god. Auntie Rosa struck Maria's quivering head from which an increasingly unsatisfied voice was rising. I tried to stop her, but she thrust me away. She's that strong? My back collided with George Aniki. Maria-chan-no-yoji-kotoba-no-hitotsu-da-kurai-ni-shika-omoa-na-kattan-da-ke-do-shougakko-no-chougakko-ni-ni-natte-mo-naura-nai-no-saikin-wa-daibu-kini
一番じゃないかい We thought that Judge Aniki's point was probably correct. And if we could use that correct sounding reason to justify our retreat from this painful scene, that was probably enough for us. Jessica and I nodded at George Aniki, and we all left. We called towards Maria that we were going to head to the guest house. But since it didn't seem to reach her ears, we felt guilty and shameless even saying it. それなら好きなだけ一人で探しなさい。ママは知りません。探す。マリアが一人で探す。ママが知らなくても探す。This is very painful to watch. 勝手にしなさい。After blasting her with those last few words, Rosa spun on her heels and quickly returned to the mansion. Maria probably viewed that as a cold, hurtful gesture. But from Rosa's perspective, that was not her intention. It was because the hand which she had so emotionally struck Maria's cheek with was still numb. It was because if she stayed there screaming, she might be again. Taken over by her emotions and continued slapping her daughter's cheek over and over. What's wrong with you, Rosa? After Rosa left, only Maria was left in the rose garden all alone. The wind began to blow stronger and stronger, and every once in a while, a raindrop would fall on her forehead. However, Maria couldn't leave that place. Not until she found that poor, withering rose. It had definitely been there. And yet, it wasn't there. Even though she knew the place, even though this was it, it wasn't there. Maria, while bitterly staring at the place it was supposed to be, thought frantically Maybe the angle I'm looking from is wrong. Maybe the height I'm looking from is wrong. While gazing at a single point, Maria repeatedly changed her position and continued to stare. The wind was getting increasingly stronger. But Maria kept on looking for that rose in front of the flower bed. It's raining. I'm gonna end here for today because, well, that last scene was extremely painful to watch. Seeing Maria get treated like that and Rosa hitting her child. It definitely showed us the dynamic between Rosa and Maria and the fact that Maria has that weird habit. Yeah, I found it annoying, but at the same time, it's not something to hit your kid over. We found out more about Maria as, you know, a person who is being bullied by her classmates, who probably, yeah, has no friends, no one outside the family to talk to. Maybe that's why she says she is unsociable. Even though with family she's not, but outside, yeah, I guess she would say that about herself. Oh my god, I'm kind of tearing up here. But in Rosa's case, we still don't really know her intention, but whether it's from a place of concern or from caring about her reputation, her self image, because her actions. Really doesn't seem like one of a loving mother. I can't believe this. <laughs> I thought Rosa was a nice sibling, <laughs> but she turned out to be a piece of shit too. So all of the siblings are bad. <sighs> well, for me, there's nothing more to say this episode. I'm just still trying to understand what I saw, <laughs> trying to comprehend and process my emotions. Can't really see a redemption arc for Rosa, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about this episode. I'll see you next time and bye!